Hello and welcome to Forest Fan TV. Stephen here and I've got Rich alongside me. Uh, we're going to be talking about the transfer embargo that's been imposed on Forest this week. Uh, it's been imposed because uh, they've gone over the uh, financial fair play regulations, uh, £8 million worth of debt, which uh, was supposed to have been kept within last season. They've gone over that. We don't know by how much because the, uh, the figures haven't been released yet. But all we do know is that Forest are under a transfer embargo, Rich. Not a surprise, is it? Let's be honest. Um, and three words to describe how we've got ourselves in this mess. Billy Bloody Davis. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we all knew that we were going to be over. We all knew that the stewardship under Billy Davis's tenure may potentially cause problems with that. Um, do we have a good enough squad, I guess, is the question, because we're stuck with it now. <laughs> Well, yeah, this is the thing. You look at the quality that Forrest have brought in in the summer, for example, with Antonio Asombolonga, and uh, we all generally thought that Pierce had built a good squad for the championship and a, a team that could compete for promotion. So, really, will this make much difference to the season? Um, well, you could look at the league table and say, well, is this season going to be good enough with the squad that we've got? Now, obviously... You can have bad luck in terms of having the injuries to the players that have got injured, but equally, we always knew that Andy Reid, because he's over 30, players pick up injuries more easily. Jack Hobbs, we always knew that he was prone to injury. Chrissy Cohen, I mean, he's just incredibly unlucky to pick up three injuries of the same kind. Um, you know, season enders, all of them. And of course, three worst players to lose you couldn't have. So, is our squad good enough? In its entirety, yes. But at the moment, could we do with someone to pep up things? Possibly. Can we get them? Who knows? Well, yeah, in terms of uh, recruitment, Forest can still bring players in. Uh, we're allowed either two loan signings or two free transfers. Uh, the, the rules around it mean that... Uh, you can't sign any new players, permanent or loan signings, unless they have 24 or fewer established players in the squad. So that's players over 21 who've played five or more games for the club. Mm -hmm. Forrest got quite a few of those, but there is still some space to bring players in. So do you expect some players to be brought in uh, by, which, by, by some means at least? Um, I'd be surprised if Stuart Pearce isn't still looking to bring players in. Let's be honest, you know, that's what managers do. They always want to improve the quality of the squad. Um, and I would also say that, you know, Stuart has made the point. It's business as usual. We just have to get on with it. Um, so he knows what, again, it's not a surprise. He's known that this has been coming. Um, he knows what means he has to work within. Um, I um, also would point out that you know the club are looking to move on Jamal Abdoon eventually, and he's on thirty-five thousand pound a week apparently. Uh, you know Jamie Mackey. I don't know if we're still paying some of his wages, but he's another player who could free up some money even on wages if he was to go on a free. Um, although I'd, I'd imagine that they'd look to get a transfer fee for him if he does move on. So you know that gives a bit of scope. Yeah. And then when you throw players like Greg Halford, who's on loan at Brighton, and Danny Collins into the mix, who hasn't featured much this mm. season, then you would think that there will be enough funds freed up. And also when you look at a player like Matt Fry, who coming on a free, there is quality out there if you're prepared to shop around and do a bit of bargaining. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and the other thing let's not forget is that Stuart Pearce's transfer dealings there's a net spend of only about half to £1 million. Pounds. I say only, obviously, you look at Ipswich, you've got a net spend of £10,000. Um, but in terms of the Darlow and Lascelles deals, yes, we're all jumping in about a screaming at the time, but actually very sensible stewardship. Yeah, you look at that now in the context of what's happened since that transfer deal and you think, well, probably was good for the club that they've moved on. Uh, and they, we have bought quality in as well. So like you say, with that net spend, it's not too bad in terms of how much money we've spent overall this season. Um, but when you look at the... Um, how we might have this embargo lifted. Uh, the club would have to prove that they've stayed within the allot allotted losses of £6 million for this season. Now, given in previous years how debt has been double that mm -hmm. in, in the seasons that have gone before this one, I can't see that happening straight away. No, and I was reading in the post today that they were saying that they expect the next three transfer windows to remain under embargo now whether there's ways and means around that um you know let's be realistic the figures are going to show losses because you can't restructure a club as simply as that um and bearing in mind as well that, that Nigel Doughty you know in his last season um as the owner you know decided actually you know we need to think about financial fair play um 
and then Fawaz came in and, you know, let's not get into a debate about that. I think we all agree he showed some naivety in his first couple of years um, and this is part of the price that we're paying. Yeah, when you look at the managerial changes and the upheaval that we've had since Fawaz came in, of course he's done a lot of good for the club financially, but also we are probably paying the price a little bit for that. And it is time to give Stuart Pearce patience and time mm -hmm. uh, to get the team in order and to, to sort Forrest out. Yeah. The other thing I would add is, of course, we've got an experienced chief exec for, you know, for the first time in a long time, a guy who knows about stewardship within the football business, and I'm hoping that that will pay dividends. The one of the, the funnier sides of this story that came out this week was that Forrest won £250,000 in a Skybet prize draw. Uh, Forrest fan that entered won. Also, Leeds United were in the running to win it. They were also under embargo as well as of this week. Uh, I suppose, as uh, one well-known supermarket would say, every little helps. <laughs> well, you know, it's useful. I don't know if we're actually allowed to spend that, though, are we? I don't know. Um, I think that um, even if we're not... I, Again, I sort of saw whispers just uh, when looking on the internet that, you know, maybe it's something that could be invested in the academy or something like that. So, so you know, like you say, it's an extra bit of money in the pot, isn't it? Yeah, everything that... Uh, I think in terms of that money, it can not be spent on direct transfer fees, but it can be used to fund wages, be that loan or free transfer. So it'll be interesting to see if the club puts put that towards it or, like you say, uh, invest it in grassroots because... You, there's no doubt that Fawaz isn't short of money. Mm -hmm. If he wants to put money into the club, he can do so. Maybe we could sign Wayne Rooney on loan for one week. <laughs> Would you take that one, Forest fans? That's an interesting call. Um, what do you think about the embargo? Do you think it's going to affect our season that much? Uh, we want to hear your thoughts, so get in touch on Twitter. At Forest Fan TV is where you'll find us. Leave your comments below as well and visit the website, www.forestfantv.com. Until next time from Rish and from me, goodbye.